Mythic Plus is hard. Before you crack your knuckles and comment, oh, but actually I have 15 characters at 4,000 score, it's super easy, hear me out. According to WoWhead, 16% of their users have earned the KSM achievement, and I'm willing to bet that WoWhead's user base skews that number to be larger than it is for the entire game's player base. For some reason, players are stopping Mythic Plus prior to just completing each dungeon twice on a level 15, which is the level that Blizzard has determined that gear rewards stop. So this isn't supposed to be challenging or so to say push content, this is technically still supposed to be in the gearing phase of gameplay. So what's going wrong? The dungeons are the same every time, the mobs do the same things, are in the same locations, and while I agree that some affixes are more of an inconvenience than a challenge, it doesn't make any dungeon completely unplayable by any means. So if the dungeons aren't changing, then it must be the players. So here are 5 things that you probably do wrong in every mythic dungeon that you run. Firstly, you're probably pugging every single time when you really don't have to. At the end of a dungeon that went well, don't just type GG, thanks, port, and leave. Ask the group if they want to do more. Ask people if you can add them and honestly, don't even ask. Just f add them and ask later when you see them online. You have literally nothing to lose by just sending a Battle.net request and at the absolute worst, they find you annoying and ignore you, in which case, you weren't really going to play with them anyway, so why does it even matter? And if you're saying, well, easier said than done, I started running keys in mid Battle for Azeroth. I started keys completely solo and then I just added one person at a time. Most people that I add just get deleted. We don't even play together. Every so often you add someone and then you actually play with them and then it builds your little community. It's such a healthy community of us that I don't even have to pug. And I have a, a few alts that need keys every week and still don't have to pug. But the other point you can use to counter my point here is that your keys simply aren't going well. So there's no one to add and no positive connections to be made. In that case, keep watching. So number two is simply not typing anything. Now, even if you don't have a complete understanding of the dungeons in and outs, sometimes a quick note in chat that's really vague can make a world of difference. Now, I'm not saying to type, don't stand in all the mechanics, you fucking brain dead idiots. I'm saying simply typing care with dodging or remember to kick stasis beam. And I'm willing to bet that by simply reminding people of the basic mechanics coming up, or even saying remember to interrupt has like a 50% increase in the amount of interrupts used that pull. I will sometimes run with the same four people and if I'm muted and not typing one dungeon, it's a catastrophe. But in the next dungeon, I unmute or type, and I'm just saying completely random vague things that don't even need to be said technically, like careful here or interrupt the big guy, things that we all definitely know. And somehow these little reminders make the entire dungeon incredibly faster than before. If you don't know what to call, join keys at random, and I am guarantee you in your first two dungeons you ever run, you will very rapidly figure out what things kill you. Say what you want about Blizzard and their design, they do make it abundantly clear what kills you when you die, so you should never really be confused. On to number 3, this one's just called not waiting. And what I mean by that is kinda just that. Sometimes, well actually not sometimes, pretty much every key, I'm gathering mobs as a tank or trying to top people's HP as a healer during Grievous. And I get that it's a time dungeon, but if I had a dollar for every time someone started blasting into the very first mob I pulled, in a pull that was supposed to be like 5 different packs together, or if I had a dollar for each time people were so hasty to run away from the healer, just bled to death on their mount running away, with that much money I'd buy YouTube and turn back on the dislike button. If your tank is standing still after a pull, pulling for the tank when the tank probably doesn't have any buttons available to him is really really bad. Also if your tank is gathering a pull, the pull isn't considered gathered until the tank plants and the mobs are just running to him or stacked on. Don't anticipate what the tank is pulling and ruin the vibe of the key or upset other players, especially if you don't consistently run with the same for other people. Simply not waiting sometimes will have you going into bosses without someone knowing the mechanic, pulling dangerous packs without assigning crowd control or interrupts, dying the threat, and so many things are solved by simply just chilling the f*** uh. out and waiting a minute. Mythic Plus Dungeon timers are not tuned that you have to do MDI esports routes to get it done. A lot of the Shadowlands dungeons, and I'm sure Dragonflight will be no exception, you can completely AFK for 9-10 to 10 minutes sometimes and then do that dungeon carefully and you will still time it. So just wait and relax, it'll be okay. The fourth thing you probably do wrong is being reluctant to use your utility. And I don't mean not using your utility when you're gathering up a pull. I mean when you're in your cooldowns doing max damage, letting dangerous, obvious mechanics hit you or hit others instead of taking one global out of your burst to stop it. And while yes, you will lose damage by sacrificing that one global, obviously, I promise you that no one on this planet cares if you're at the top of the damage meter if it's on a white. Better you do a little bit less damage, however, live the pull. In my experience, and I've only done around 1900 keys this expansion, most full group wipes tend to happen in a pull with bloodlust. 
because people just want to deal damage and ignores the most basic uses of utility. And if at the end of the dungeon you're claiming that your damage is terrible because you had to stun a few mobs, turn your attention to the top key runners on the leaderboards. They have meticulously planned out routes that min-max the absolute crap out of everyone's available utility, in some cases landing more kicks, interrupts, and stuns in one key than some players have in their entire life. And they still do orders of magnitude more damage than the average player. So don't blame the lost globals on utility for your damage being bad. The last thing you're doing wrong is not taking your online privacy seriously. Just, I'm just kidding. The actual final thing you may be doing wrong in Mythic Plus Dungeons is waiting on perfect moments. If you're a two or three or even four minute cooldown class, as in your burst has a long cooldown, I promise you that you will do more overall if you basically just use it on cooldown. What I mean is don't hold your three minute cooldown for a pull that's coming in two and a half minutes so you top the meter on that one pull. That makes you look like an idiot, and I understand that sometimes it's more complicated, but let me give an example. In this pull here, I'm playing Ret Paladin. I chose to use this class for footage because it's very simple, Ret has a 2 minute burst cooldown that has no complications. It just makes you do a lot of damage every 2 minutes. This part of the dungeon is often where players lose a lot of damage waiting for these perfect moments. We're on a pull here that could be small or could be large depending on what the tank wants. And the next pull could be small or could be combined with either this pull or the next pull to make an even larger pull. If that second pull isn't combined, then the third pull is almost guaranteed to be a really big pull. So players see this lineup of potential big juicy pulls and then hold on this first pull based on the prospect of the next pull maybe being a really big one However, after this pull, the tank then pulls two mobs, but they continue to hold because they're like, okay, for sure the next pull has to be big. Then what happens is the next pull is scary. The tank splits it up, and at this point, they held all that time for literally no reason. When a better course of decision making is ripping two minute cooldowns on the first pull, if the next pull is really large, you actually don't care because what's going to happen is every other DPS will use their cooldowns on this pull. Then the pull after that you are guaranteed to be the only one with your cooldowns up, so you'll get nearly full value out of them at the end of the day. But ripping cooldowns on the first pull also means that you're protected from getting your damage scuffed by not knowing the tank route. And while there are most definitely times in dungeons you should hold CDs in anticipation of something, the motivating factor for this should not be padding overall damage. A lot of the scary pulls in dungeons aren't the most glamorous, and ripping big CDs on one or two scary mobs can majorly influence the dungeon in a positive way. Mythic plus dungeons and groups should not be treated like one night stands. You're not just trying to hit the juice and then dip out. You want to leave a long lasting positive impact on the people you play with so you grow your small community of gamers to push keys with or do weeklies. And then at the end everyone's just happier. So how many of these things are you guilty of doing? I know for a fact that I've done all of this, that's why I'm able to make this list. But hopefully I made these mistakes so you can avoid them. If there's anything I missed or anything you think I got wrong, let me know in the comments. But that's all for now. Later!